Kids, here we go. So this is going to be part two of the Tyrannus setup, and I've decided um, to do this entire thing using the companion, okay? Uh, which is the OpenTX companion, which is the software for the Tyrannus system, okay? So one thing uh, we're going to do. This is for the QX7. I'm going to start up all these videos with this little picture I made right here with the switch assignments and everything else. So what we're going to do is we're going to open TX. There's a link in the description where you can download the Companion 2.2.3, I believe, is where we're at. Um, and I'm going to show you how to set this segment is how to set up the transmitter. So what you need to do is hold your roll trim and your yaw trim to the center. Okay, so you're pushing them both in to the negative directions to the Q or the X7 here while you're holding those two in. Hit the power key, boom, she boots up into DFU mode, okay? Then you open up your companion. Plug in your radio uh, with, you know, obviously the, the mini USB cable um, into DFU mode. And then what we're going to do is we're going to hit read models. Eh, we can just do it this way. Settings. There we go. Um, this button up here, if you hover your mouse over these things, they will tell you what they do. Okay, let's close this out and I'll show you what I mean. So if you hit settings, radio profiles, edits, radio splash image, blah, blah, blah. I'm not going to go through every single little thing you can fucking do with this thing. Uh, but I am going to go over the major points. So we're going to go into settings right here. Name your profile whatever you want. You can call it whatever. Your pilot's name, whatever you want, radio type. This is the important bit. Make sure if you're doing a QX7, you set it up for a QX7 or X7S. Hit that. Your menu language is English. In my case, it may not be in yours. Um, and this is what I, I do not know what all of these are, what all of them do. I have mine set up on PPM US, Lewis script, um, there's the European. If you've got the European firmware, you may need to use that. No heli, uh, blah, blah, blah. I don't really go into that. You can research that if you like. Um, I'm not going to go over the splash screen, but you can select the image that you want to do, and you can do all that good stuff. Uh, SD structure path, you can select folder to back these up. Um, backup folder, same thing. This is for when you want to back up your radio. So in my case... I'm going to go select folder. I'm going to go into my quad crap, cams and trans, Tyrannus. And we're just going to go, let's see, that is just for SD structure path. So we're just going to do this. And then backup folder, I'm going to do this, go to the same folder. We'll just use 418 for now. Select folder. Enable automatic backup before writing firmware if you want to. That's self-explanatory. Um, mode 2, rudder, throttle, aileron. I'm a mode 2 guy. Some people are mode 1 or mode 4, whatever the case may be. Uh, mode 2 is with your throttle on the left. And default channel order, T-A-E-R, A-E-T-R, whatever you want to do. Append version number, blah, 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 blah. I don't think we have to worry about any of that. Application settings. Remember the 10 most recently used files. Um, this is for when you shut down the, the software. It will remember these things. Startup, do you want to show, uh, show the splash screen when companion starts? That is for this software here. Automatic check for new updates, which I do. Automatic check for companion updates. So this is checking for firmware for your radio. So when you guys boot up this program, it will look and see. It'll say, hey... Do we have uh, new firmware available or the new companion software? Uh, user splash screen, Google Earth executable. I don't mess with any of this stuff. This is basics. I'm going to do an advanced class of this later on. I just want to get you guys up and running. Simulator settings, blah, 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 blah. Um, I don't run any of that. So hit OK. Now what you want to do 
is go down to here, read models and settings from radio. You can do that under read write as well. You don't have to use the quick icons. You can read models and settings from radio. Boom, this is what we got. This is my stuff here. So I'm gonna stop it right here and we're gonna go into part two of setting this thing up. All right, kids, now what we're going to do is we're going to start into setting up a model. I put this diagram up here because it's just, like I said before, it's just easier. So switch A is here, switch B is here, switch C is here, switch D is here, then G is at the back, and H is at the back. We're not going to use the potentiometers in this particular lesson, if you will, okay? And then our trims, obviously. So if we're going to open our companion back up. And we're going to read, you go here, or you can go here, whichever you want to do. You can read models and crap parameters. Now, this is my main channel, or my main model, I'm sorry, for all my quads. I run every single freestyle or race quad off of model number one. You can keep binding receiver after receiver after receiver after receiver as much as you want, um, onto one model. You do not have to set up a separate model for every bird, okay? Now, if you have a wing like this, um, that's gonna be used, you know, mixers and this, that, whatever, you may wanna do that. Um, and usually planes, I, I would have a different model for every single one for fixed wings because you've got trim settings and all these other crazy stuff. And GPS drones, I also have a separate, uh, a separate model for those. So we're going to just start from scratch. So what you can do, double click anywhere you want. I'm not going to go on number one because that's my main one. I'm just going to double click on 11. Bam, there you go. Model 11. Now we're going to right click and we're going to use the model wizard. You don't have to do this. Um, it all, it's really kind of pointless, um, <laughs> but I'm going to show it to you anyway. Uh, we're going to set it up for, you can name it what you want, so we can name it, I don't know, quad, whatever. Multi-rotor, next. Um, throttle channel, this is where you can assign your channels. You know, do you want your throttle to be channel 2, channel 4, blah, 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 blah. That's fine, that all makes sense. Um, we're going to do a throttle timer, you can do a flight timer. I'm just going to skip those because I'm going to show you how to manually do those. Hit next. Uh, hit OK, I understand. That's really all the wizard does. You don't have to use the wizard. So what you would do, you could double you could double click on anything and just right click and hit edit. And it basically does the same thing. So we're going to go right click on the one we just made with the wizard. We're going to hit edit model. Do, 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 do. OK. And it came up on the other screen. So here we go. So setup tab this is the very first tab that we've got model we're going to call it gps drone just to make it different okay i am going to set up two timers i'm going to set up a throttle timer and you can only do three you can only do three letters at a time okay that's all it's going to show up if i remember right yep okay we're going to do a throttle and we're going to do an on so a throttle time and an on time you can make it so it counts down or just counts up. I have them count up, you know, like as soon as it starts, it just starts counting. If you wanted to, you could put a three in here and put in a count down and uh, that's what it would do, all right? So I'm, I'm gonna count up, so I'm gonna do throttle. I'm gonna go over here and I'm going to tie this to throttle switch, THS. Countdown is silent. I don't want to count every second. I do want it to announce the minutes. So when it hits one minute, it's going to say one minute, okay? Do I want it to be persistent, meaning just to keep, you know, when it gets to three minutes or whatever, if you did the countdown, it will keep telling you over and over. On time, this one I just want to turn on. Let's see where to go. On, period, done. That's all there is to it. I'm not going to do a minute call on it. Don't care about that. Um, throttle source. Okay, so that is just for the timers. You can have up to three. Um, and I'm going to show you how to reset those in a moment as well. So there you go. So as soon as we hit throttle, this timer will start going. And as soon as we turn on the transmitter, this one's going to start going. 
okay? You don't need this. You don't need either one of them. I'm just showing you how to do it. Uh, throttle source is the throttle, no shit. Throttle warning, meaning if the throttle's anywhere but zero, when you boot this thing on, do you want to tell you? It'll say throttle warning when you boot up. That's what you want for this. Uh, trim steps, this is for trims, uh, which we don't usually use in quads. At least I don't, I actually turn mine totally off. Trims display, do you want them to be on or always on or never? I'm gonna put them on never. Center beep, okay, this is so when the sticks are at center, physically at center, they will beep. I do use this for GPS drones um, on my throttle. So I'll go over to my throttle and I will put a center beep on that one. Uh, the reason I do that is because when you're using altitude hold, it comes in very handy. But for quads, we're not gonna do it. Switch warnings. Do you want this to give you a warning when the transmitter boots up saying, hey, the switch is not in the correct position? Like your arming switch, for instance, okay? So if you have any of these clicked and they're not in the up position in this case, it will say, switch to air, switch three air, blah, blah, blah. Or you can set these to middle if they're a two-way. If they're a two-way, it gives you two positions. If it's a three-way, it gives you three positions. Uh, you get the idea. So in my case, acro mode's all the way down on A, B, C, D. Um, so I would want mine to be down like that. And my arm switch is A, which would be, I want it up. So I could do it like this. And there you go. Does that make sense? So I want my switch, my arming switch to be in the disarm mode, and I want my flight switch to be, or mode switch to be in acro when this thing boots up. If this switch is up and this switch is up, it'll boot up just fine with no warnings. If these are down or in any other position, it will give you a warning. Very basic. Okay. Um, internal radio system protocol, Fry Sky. Most of us probably use the D16 settings. This is if you're using like XM Plus uh, or the XM receiver, 16 channel receivers with S bus, all that stuff. Um, you would have to turn this off if you're using a module on the back, which I'm not. And then if you're using the older style receivers, you can use the D8s and this, that, whatever. Okay, I do not want D8. You want to start on channel one in most cases, and how many channels do you want it to be able to do? In this case, I want eight. Believe it or not, if you put it on 16, uh, there is a slight latency in the timing of the protocol, if you will. It's very, very slight, but unless you're using a drone, like a GPS drone or a fixed wing, you know, for a standard old racing quad or freestyle quad that we use, eight channels is probably perfect. Receiver, do you, usually, when you open up a model on any of these numbers here, it will default to the receiver number. So if you're one of those guys that wants model one, model two, model three, model four, model five for all your different birds, you're gonna have to make sure you put them on the right receiver number. Um, that receiver number will be specific to that, chan that model. However, I do not do that. I use receiver zero for everything that's a quad. And I have uh, receiver number one is my GPS drones, and receiver number two is my fixed wings, if much I only have one right now. But, um, and like I said, you can put as many receivers on there as you want. The other interesting thing is, like, notice number one model up here is my main one that I use when I go flying. We are creating model 11. And if I just set this to zero, model 11 will work with all of my birds that are bound to model one as well. Does that make sense? Uh, that's really cool. So now you can, you don't have to rebind everything. You could say, okay, I don't like this model for whatever reasons. I'm just gonna make a new one. You can just set it to the receiver number that you want, bam, and it will be all hooked up. Very, very cool. Uh, let's see, fail safe mode. This is very, very important, <laughs> okay? What you want is this, no pulses. Trust me on that. Not set, it gives you a warning. Hold is really fucking bad because if you go out of range, your bird will fly away. So if you're at half throttle and you go out of range and this is on hold, it will hold it at half throttle until the battery dies and flies away. Uh, custom, you can set it up custom where you can make it do whatever, but no pulses usually works fine. And then, or you can make it uh, dependent on your receiver, which is something that 
I usually don't do. I usually just put no pulses, and after I do every single bird, I will check and make sure that um, without props on, I'll, I'll basically arm the bird, turn off my transmitter, and there you go. Everything's good. And external radio module protocol is off because we are using internal, okay? Does that make sense? Good. All right. Um, that is that for the setup tab. And I will be right back. And we are back. Okay, so we just finished up with the setup tab. Heli, we're going to skip because I don't know shit about helicopters. I know how to fly them, kind of. Don't know how to set them up. Flight modes. Now, this is something you don't necessarily have to do, but I do do it, okay? One is default. Um, what you do, I would say call this acro or do whatever you want. But what I do, I don't actually set these up. And I'll show you what I do. I turn off my trims, okay? Check it out. Trim disabled, trim disabled, because on quads, you don't use trim. You just don't. If your model is flying to the left or the right or pitching forward, pitching back or spinning, um, chances are good your trim is out of whack, like your bottom trim's all the way over, or your board orientation is at an angle or something to that nature. So um, you wanna fix that in beta flight or butterflight, whichever you're using, I disable it here. If you disable it on the flight mode zero default, all of the flight modes automatically default to that, which is kind of nice. Uh, if we scroll down, yeah, hang on, I just wanna double check, make sure I didn't miss anything over on there. Um, if we scroll down, uh, global variable one, two, three, you can, these are really useful for fixed wings. This is basic quad setup, so I'm not gonna get into any of that, but that's what I do, I disable all of my trims. And I'm going to show you another reason why I do that later. Inputs. Okay, now this is where it gets to be fun. This is where we have to assign our switches to do things. Channel 1, 2, 3, and 4 are already taken up by our directional controls, right? In my case, I use channel 5. We can just double click it or we can hit add, left click, hit add, same thing. My channel 5 is my mode switch. Does that make sense? So that's my acro, angle, horizon, whatever you want to do. So I put mod. Again, it can only be three letters. Line name. Now you can actually name it. I put modes. Okay. Source. What do you want it to be your source? In my case, I am, let me pull up that picture. My mode switch is switch D, which is a three position switch. So our source is going to be switch D. Bam, right there. Include trim, you can say yes, you can say no. Switch D does not have a trim, really, um, so that doesn't matter. Uh, your weight, global variable, just leave that stuff alone. Your curve, you can put an expo curve, a functional curve, or whatever curve you want, and then you can put in the curve number. We have not gotten to the curves yet. Okay, now flight modes. This is where the flight modes tab came into. If you're selecting different flight modes, you can have different switches do different things in different modes. It's pretty interesting. But again, I don't use those. Um, you can leave switch blank because switches for flight modes. And stick side, all negative, positive, or all positions is basically what that's saying. So we want this switch to look at all positions, not just negative and positive. Okay, negative, positive, or all. We're going to leave that there. Bam, there you go. So, modes. Let's do another one. I use, so that is channel one, two, three, four, five. Channel six, I use for arming. Let's do the same thing. Arm. You don't have to use the line name. Uh, for my arming switch, I actually use this one, which is switch A. So we're gonna go down to switch A, bam, right there. We're gonna leave all this stuff the same again. Um, we're not gonna use flight modes, all positions, great. And then for channel number seven, uh, that is my flip. Turtle mode, oh, I'm sorry, no it's not, it's my beaver mode. We're just gonna put bet and beeper, okay? And for that particular switch, I use this guy, switch H, okay? 
So we're going to go down to switch H. Oh, did I skip it? Switch. There it is. Woo, been a long day. Switch H, blah, 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 blah. Okay, that's all good. And then this one I use for turtle mode. So I'm just gonna call it flip. And this one's gonna be flip. It doesn't matter. And for my flip, I use switch C. So we're gonna go down to switch C. Bam, there we go. That's it. Eight channels, eight things that I use. Okay, that's all we've got to do. Now you can rearrange them. You can go all the way down to 32 by selecting one and moving up or moving it down in case you wanted them in a different order. You can do that. Mixes. I do not use mixing on quads. I just don't. That's like, say for instance, you're mixing your elevator with your or your rudder with your ailerons or something like that, and you wanted it to, that's when you use mixing, and yeah, maybe someday I'll do a video on that. I don't use mixes on this. So your inputs, let's talk about this, are the physical switches on your radio that you're using. Your outputs are what those switches are assigned to. Okay, does that make sense? So input, we have aileron, throttle, elevator. So we could go aileron, elevator, throttle, Okay, um, aileron, uh, I did it backwards, whatever, doesn't matter. This is just for demo purposes, and we'll call it rudder, doesn't matter. And you can spell, spell these out, whatever you want. And then we don't even have to rename them again, but you can if you're going to get all anal about it. So then we go arm, uh, we go modes, arm. So we know channel five was my modes. Oh, that one's only four. And then this is arm. This is beeper. You don't have to do this. I'm doing it and then flip. All right. Global variables we're not using. Sub trims. This is when you, you, you use these to calibrate your 1,000, 1,500, and 2,000 in beta flight. You know, when you're, you're calibrating your rates. This is, these are what you do. I do recommend you do that through the radio, not through this program. Um, but what you basically do is put your throttle all the way down and then you tweak it up until it says 1000 or 998 or whatever in beta flight. That's a different video. You get the idea. Okay. If you want to say, I know this was throttle and this is elevator, whatever. We get the idea. Now you could call it yaw, pitch, roll, whatever you wanted to do. But like say your throttle was backwards. You, this is where you can reverse it. Does that make sense? So if our throttle was backwards... I could go to direction and hit invert, and that will flip it over. Or say, for instance, any of your switches. I actually had this happen the other day because I broke my friggin' switch on my arm. Um, so I used a different, uh, was it that one? Yeah. And uh, so I had to invert my arming switch because I put it on a different one and I was too lazy to program everything. That just flips it around. Does that make sense, guys? Very, very simple to do. Um, then do you want a specific curve, one through nine? Actually, it's more than that, I think. 16. Yep. Um, and we haven't gotten to the curves yet, but I tell a lot of people to do this. You can assign throttle curves and pitch curves, roll curves, whatever you want on your, your radio. So if you had a really powerful micro and you wanted to fly it in the house, you could knock that curve down by a switch and so it wouldn't be as extreme a flyer, if that makes sense. I don't use curves for anything, but, you know, whatever. PPM center, um, 1,500 is usually ideal. And then you could always raise or trim that as well. And your minimum should be dialed in relative to beta flight. Okay? Does that make sense? And that's really about it for your output. So, beep, channel 8, flip, beep, blah, 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 blah. And then you can dial these in if, you, if, if need be. All right. Curves. I'm not going to go into this really, really deep, but you can set up, what did I just say? 32 curves, 16 curves. Maybe it's 32. I don't know. It doesn't matter. I don't really use them a lot, but what you could do is you can say curve one and you can set the dynamic up any way you want like this. Bam. Or you can reverse it. Do you want it a linear, a sign, you know, whatever you want it to be, um, which side of the spectrum greater than, and again, I think this is a little bit more advanced, 
there you go. There's a graduated curve. Eh, I don't use them. Yeah, maybe in the advanced video that I do of this, it will uh, work out a little bit better, but I'll hit it then. I'm not a big curve guy when it comes to throttle curves and things. Logical switches. These are, if you're used to um, PLCs in the industrial world, programmable logic controllers, Allen Bradley Siemens, and things of that nature, that's basically what this is. I'm not getting into log logical switches in this video. Um, pretty straightforward if you know ladder logic and things like that we're going to skip it i'm just going to the stuff that people really probably want to know special functions this is where you get shit to talk so special function number one we could say um how do we want to do this uh switch h our arming switch so what was our arming switch we go down to here and we, we're in inputs tab, arm is switch A, right? So we go to special functions, let's go to switch A, right here, down, center, or up, we're gonna say up is my disarm. I want it to play a track, not not play a sound. There's play sound, there's all sorts. I'm not gonna go through all of these guys. You can play with this, but you wanna go into play track. And then under parameters, you would say, what do you want to play? All right, so to do this, if you've already downloaded the, the SD card contents onto your radio, you can open up that SD card. So we're gonna go down to E which is our Tyrannus uh, SD card, micro SD card, sorry. Go into sounds, go into English, and here's all your sounds. So I know for a fact I can go into armed, acro armed, um, where is it? Uh, let's see, arm. Double click it, you'll hear it say it. Maybe. Computer slow. Arm motors. There you go, arm motors. But what you can do is you can just type that in to here. So just type in arm, bam. Does that make sense? Now we can go to S, oh, hang on a second. I hit enter and I shouldn't have. Um, now we can go to SA down, play track, see play script, play value, set timer, blah, 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 blah. And then we can go down to play track, like I just said. Where the fuck to go? Play sound is not the same thing as play track. Um, geez, sorry about that. Play track, and we could look for, go back into that file, and we could look for a problem. Just assume, let's say, okay, disarm. Does that make sense? Disarm, so D-I-S-A-R-M. Just make sure you spell it right. D-I-S-A-R-M. Done, disarm, perfect. Now, another thing that I'll do, and you guys get the idea, so then you can set acro mode, you can make it say acro, angle, blah, 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 for every single switch, this is how you get it to talk. Here's another thing that I do. I'll go into, remember how we disabled the trims? I'll go into the aileron, let's see, is that right? Aileron trim left, which would be your left hand side, is that right? Not your rudder trim. Yeah. Let's go rudder trim left. Now, remember, we disabled our trim buttons because we don't use those on quads, but they still work. They just don't affect the trim. Then what I have it do is I go into here and I'll have it do a reset. And then timer one or timer two or timer three. I can't remember which one. Throttle is the one that I use basically for my flight timer. Does that make sense? So I go back into logical switches, I'm sorry, special functions, and timer one is the one I want to reset, and I want to activate that. Now what's really cool is, as soon as we hit our throttle, that timer starts clicking down. When I click, after I land, change my batteries, crash, and after I click my trim button to the left, it will reset this timer. Now the cool thing about this is we can hit simulator. We hit that simulator button, and you get this little dude. Now check it out. See how my, there's my on time, and here's my throttle. 
If I move my throttle up, that timer should start going, which it did not. Why did it not? See, it's good for troubleshooting. Let's see, reset timer one. Let's go in and hit setup. We've got to close this out. I fucked up somewhere. Throttle TS. Throttle percent. Oh, maybe it's throttle T. Throttle time. Okay. My bad. I fucked that up. So throttle T. Or you can do throttle percentage if you want. Uh, let's try this again. Well, shit. What did I have that set up on? Hmm. Oh, well. It does work. I've done it. <laughs> oh, crap. Oh, well. Anyway, it does work. I have it working on my radio. Actually, let's just see what it looks like in here. I already have it on mine. We're going to open this up. You guys that know this are probably like, dumbass. Throttle S. Huh. Okay. My fault. So let's go down to... 11. Open this back up. It's throttle S, which is what I had it on. And throttle, oh, it's because we don't have our throttle mapping set up right. That's right. Remember this over here? Throttle channel 2. That's okay. This does work, though. I'll show you on mine, because I don't feel like remapping this. Hopefully, I'm not confusing the shit out of you. So, if we go into special functions and I hit simulate, my power on is right here, I hit my throttle up, and you see my fly timer is going. I bring it back down, it stops, but let's say I've replaced the bird or replaced the battery, I click to the left on my trim, and it resets that counter. Very, very cool. Sorry about the snafu on that, I'm not editing it out. You guys get the idea, it's not fucking rocket science. So, under your special functions, you can do a lot of really cool stuff. Um, Experiment, play with it. You can do all sorts of cool stuff relative to switches. If you don't want something on there, you put these four or five lines, that little thingy. Um, do anything you want. When this trim is over, you can make it play a track or play a sound. Um, I have mine doing all sorts of stupid shit. Uh, actually, with this trim right here, I'll go down to here, rudder trim left, I'll assign it again. And I'll put play track. Do, 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 do. Play track. And that track, oops, let's override. My bad. Play track, and I do reset. So not only does it, um, I'm sorry, rudder resets the timer it will actually make the sound of reset. I got doubles in there, sorry about that. It will reset as well. So it resets the timer and it says reset, if that makes any sense, okay? Uh, very, very simple to do. And you can have it repeat, not repeat, enable, disable, this, that, whatever. You can make it play at once, not during a startup. You can do all sorts of stuff. You can make it repeat for five seconds, six seconds, whatever you want to do. Very, very simple to do. Telemetry. Um, might use this one for a little bit of a later date as well. I don't really use RSSI. I don't fly my quads that far away. I do use it on GPS drones, but I do not use it on standard quads. And I know a lot of people are like, oh, I can't believe you don't use RSSI. I don't fly two miles away with my quads. I usually fly, you know, football field away or so, and I never have problems. So uh, variable limits, variable source, for telemetry top bar. Um, I'm going to put this in the more advanced uh, video that I do because this one's just meant to be basic, get you in the air, this, that, whatever. Now that we've done GPS drone, you can click it and drag it to anywhere you want. So we can put it right here. Say this one here, I can right click, I can delete it. Absolutely. Delete it. Again, you can right click again. Now notice it made a copy when I did that. I went to go move it, and it just copied it. Hmm, interesting, right? So what you can do, though, is you can cut and then paste, and that will actually move it. If you just drag it, it just makes basically makes a copy. 
which I think is very, very fucking useful because this is my main one here. I can just take it down to here, put it right there, and it backs it up. Essentially, it makes a copy of it. Um, or overwrite it. Do you, do you want to overwrite it? Yes. Bam. I just overwrote it. That makes sense. So there you go. Pretty, pretty straightforward. So if I drag this up to here and drag it on there, it'll ask you if you want to overwrite it. Right click. You can delete it. Right click. You can copy it and move it or paste it, I should say. I don't know really why you'd do that one. Um, simulate model pulls up your simulator again. Um, there's our power on. You can hit your page key. You can go through all the stuff that you want to do. Pretty, pretty cool. All right. The next thing you want to do once you get this done is you want to send everything you've done in here to your radio. Hit that button there. Or you can hit read, write, send to radio. I never do check firmware compatibility. I usually keep my stuff up to date. Hit write to TX. Bam, done. That's it. It's in there. Another cool thing you can do is a backup. Uh, write backup to radio or back up your radio. Back up radio to file. So you hit that. This will back up everything. And I do suggest that if you're, I'm just going to do it to desktop. We're just going to call it backup. Um, I do suggest that if you're new to it, you do this before you fuck with it. There you go. Totally backed up. Now what we can also do, we can back up our firmware, read firmware from radio, which is basically the same thing. And we can go to desktop again, and I can type in firmware with the date, whatever I wanted to do. And this will back up the firmware. And I do suggest you do this too, if you're getting ready to do a firmware upgrade. That way, if you fuck up, you're okay. Um, pretty straightforward. I mean, there's really not a lot to it. Uh, let's see if there's anything I want to go. These are more shortcuts to everything else. Um, log files, edit radio settings. We can hit this again. Um, this gets very, all the parameters that I went over in the video yesterday, this is where you can change them in the GUI or the graphical user interface, which we know is companion. Slow show splash screen on setup for six seconds. This is everything that I did in that video. So this is very nice to do. Um, I'll let you guys look through it. Everything I went through in that video is in what we did is in here. Okay. Very handy to have all of this stuff in here. All right. Hardware, blah, 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 blah. Rudder elevator, blah, 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 blah. So yeah, same stuff we went through yesterday. Very cool. Um, so before you exit this, you definitely want to make sure you send the shit to the radio hit right to transmitter, bam, and there you go. Everybody's copacetic. Now, this is important. Some people say it is and some people say it isn't. What I will do is I will hit this arrow and I will eject both E and the Tyrannus before I unplug it. I have had the SD card get corrupt and that's not good. So always eject before you disconnect. The other thing that I do, notice how my quads number one is in bold. If you right click and hit, uh, what is it? Oh, for fuck's sake. Add model, delete model, insert model. Restore from backup, duplicate, set as default. I'm sorry, that's why I didn't see it. I set that as my default. Okay? Because that's what I fly 95% of the time. If I want to go into... Um, fly GPS drone or something like that. I don't do that as often as I do my quads, so I make that the default file. And everything up here is pretty much shortcuts for everything I already showed you. Delete, copy, paste, all that stuff. So hopefully that makes sense. Um, if you want to check for updates, there you go. No updates available. Pretty straightforward stuff. It's a really useful um, thing to have. So. Make sure you use it, check it out. Um, I'm going to expand on this a little bit more later, but this should be enough to get you guys up and going and rocking and rolling and flying. So, till next time, kids, keep shining side up. Talk to you later. Bye. Look.
Bam, JJ. Hope you like fishing. Bam, JJ. Bye, JJ. Don't feel like fishing.